By 1978, Tom Baker's fourth Doctor had firmly established himself as the iconic face of Doctor Who, guiding it into a period of huge cultural and commercial success. After seeing the Doctor save all of time itself in season 16, producer Graham Williams decided to scale back the following adventures. To achieve this, the TARDIS would be equipped with a randomizer to evade the villainous Black Guardian. This device would re-establish the original intention of the Doctor as someone who wanders into adventures accidentally. Around the same time, new script editor Douglas Adams was keen to take this opportunity to tailor the Doctor's character more closely to Tom Baker's own personality, leading to a slightly different take on the character along with new companion Romana 2, who would still be inferior to Romana 1. The stage was set for the end of the Fourth Doctor era, but there were many episodes that would not become a reality, including Sharda, which would become especially famous, or rather infamous, for never being completed due to a myriad of production issues. So, without further ado, this is the comprehensive history of the Fourth Doctor's untold stories. For Doctor Who's 16th season, David Fisher had penned The Fantastical Androids of Tara, which was a parody of the 1894 novel The Prisoner of Zender. Producer Graham Williams liked this serial a lot, so after finishing work on season 17's The Creature from the Pit, Fisher was asked to contribute another parody, this time a serial based on the character Bulldog Drummond from the 1920 novel of the same name. The resulting story titled The Gamble with Time would be commissioned on January 12, 1979 as the second serial of season 17, and would see the Doctor and Romana in the 1920s teaming up with a detective named Puck Farquharson. Since gambling was a major a major part of the plot, Fisher set the story in Las Vegas, the gambling capital of the world. However, this setting clashed with the Drummond parody, so in February the action was moved to Paris and Monte Carlo instead. This would also make it possible to take the production of the science fiction show outside of the UK for the first time in its history. The opportunity to film in France was a tantalising prospect for Graham Williams, who thought it would be great for publicity. In early March of 1979, the possibility was confirmed by production unit manager John Nathan Turner. Since the location filming could be achieved with a similar cost to recording in studio on sets. However, the drawback of location filming meant the locations could not be redressed for the 1920s, so the story had to be changed to modern day along with removing the Monte Carlo sequences. Williams was happy with these changes though, mainly because he had concerns of the content of Fisher's scripts. He believed the writer had spent too much time indulging in the Bulldog Drummond parody at the expense of writing a good Doctor Who story. He also had issues with the emphasis of gambling, specifically a sequence where the Doctor cheats at a casino. By now, however, Fisher had moved on to other commitments, leaving him unable to carry out the necessary rewrites. This forced Williams and script editor Doug Adams to hurriedly rewrite the story themselves, with the help of director Michael Hayes. Isolated in Williams' house, the pair worked non-stop for more than three days to produce a set of replacement scripts, which became City of Death, one of the most beloved and well-regarded episodes of the Fourth Doctor era. City of Death would retain many elements from the Gamble of Time, such as Scarlioni being scattered throughout time and trying to return to the explosion which caused it. The ending was different, however, since the original had Scarlioni reluctantly agreeing to allow the accident to happen, compared to City of Death, where he dies trying to escape. Many characters were renamed, such as Farquharson becoming Duggan, whilst other side characters were removed entirely, along with Canine's presence dramatically lessened. While City of Death would go on to become a beloved serial of the Fourth Doctor era, The Gamble with Time would fade into obscurity and now stands as a testament to how much a Doctor Who story can evolve during the production process. A four-part story titled The Tearing of the Veil was commissioned from playwright Alan Drury on the 2nd of April 1979. He delivered the first two scripts in early May, but it was decided that the story was not working out. Douglas Adams worked with Drury over the summer, helping to solve a plot problem regarding the TARDIS's random tendencies of showing up in different times and places. By September 19th, an acceptable draft had finally been completed and Drury was paid for his work. This version of the story was set in and around a Victorian vicarage, where the vicar's widow is being exploited by fake spiritualists. The first episode would begin with a seance, with the TARDIS materialising at the timely moment of the group asking if there's anybody there. 
It turns out the Doctor was being chased by an evil force comparable to the Master, and all the con artists are killed one by one in nasty ways. According to Drury, there was an animate demon doll being used as a beacon to summon the antagonist, K9 would be ripped apart by a poltergeist, and the Doctor would have his life force drained from him, causing him to spend much of the story as a cranky old man, wandering around in a nightgown and saying, bah humbug. Despite the tearing of the veil seemingly being good to go for season 17, it was pushed back to the following season, and eventually Graham Williams and Douglas Adams would be replaced by John Nathan Turner and Christopher H. Bidmead respectively. However, Bidmead actually hated Doctor Who, since he believed it was too silly, but he had been convinced to join the program by Nathan Turner's and Barry Letts' vision for the show. Bidmead wasn't given long to settle into his new role though, since he started only three months before the first script for season 18. Aside from David Fisher's The Leisure Hive, which had already been commissioned, the only other complete scripts at the time were The Tearing of the Veil. However, Bidmead heavily disliked the whimsical science fiction of his predecessor, so the script was discarded, something he would later expand upon in a 1986 interview, claiming, I gather it was written by a professional writer, but that didn't show. It was kind of a whimsical Victorian story, but it was quite unworkable as a script. Therefore, the tearing of the veil would never come to fruition, just showing how much power the script editors of Doctor Who wielded at the time. When a final story was needed for season 17, script editor Douglas Adams suggested a two-part idea about the Doctor going into retirement but constantly being summoned back from his isolation to resolve various problems. However, Graham Williams thought it would be seen as mocking Doctor Who, so he cancelled the idea. For leverage, Adams decided to avoid working on a replacement idea, since he believed that the time pressures would force Williams to agree to the original plan. However, this didn't go how Adams planned, and Williams forced him to create a new, last-minute replacement to end the pair's final season on Doctor Who. Much like their sudden partnership on City of Death, they began to write a serial titled Sunburst, although Williams allowed Adams the sole credit as writer. Despite being keen to involve the Time Lords in Season 15, Williams had avoided them ever since, as he believed Gallifrey society was overexposed. However, Adams wanted to create a story revolving around capital punishment, exploring what a highly advanced civilization like the Time Lords could do with their worst criminals. The pair would ultimately compromise by setting the serial in Cambridge rather than Gallifrey itself. Even though Sunburst evolved quickly, Adams felt as though the scripts were bloated, so he changed many aspects, such as renaming a number of characters and changing the fate of Chronotis, who originally died permanently in Episode 2, but would now be revived later on in the story. At the beginning of August 1979, BBC head of drama Graham MacDonald wrote to Williams, also voicing displeasure about the serial being unsuitable for its six-part length. By late August, this swan song had been rechristened as Sharda. The scripts would be finalised into the story Doctor Who fans know today, seeing the fourth Doctor and Romana encountering Time Lords and a mad scientist, the action culminating inside the titular prison. However, as is well known by now, Sharda holds the distinction for being unlike any other lost story. Indeed, the adventure was fully scripted and even saw extensive filming both on location in Cambridge and in a studio session at the BBC Television Centre. However, it was during this location filming that issues began to plague the production. Director Pennant Roberts had booked two lighting crews for an ambitious nighttime chase sequence, but the Union saw Doc 2 as an important target for their strikes, preventing the shoot and forcing the second episode's climax to be rewritten for daytime. However, despite successful studio work during early to mid-November, the planned second session on the 19th and 20th was scuppered by an ongoing technician's dispute at the BBC. After successful rehearsals on the morning of November 19th, the cast and crew returned after lunch only to find themselves locked out, preventing any recording at the television centre, which was an issue made worse by the strike stretching long into November and making the third recording session equally impossible. The majority of productions affected by the strike were Christmas programmes which the BBC considered a higher priority than Doctor Who, so Williams was forced to reluctantly drop Sharda since it could not be booked into the studio before its broadcast date of January 1980. On December 10th, it was officially decided that the Horns of Nymon would close out Season 17, marking a rather abrupt end to the tenures of Graham Williams and Douglas Adams on Doctor Who. Williams would grow distant from television, and unfortunately, on August 17th, 1990, he would die in a shooting accident at the hotel he owned. 
Douglas Adams, on the other hand, would be catapulted into stardom thanks to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The writer would adapt elements of Sharda into his 1987 novel, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, and led a successful career until a fatal heart attack on May 11, 2001. In the years following its cancellation, Sharda would become a holy grail of sorts for Doctor Who fans due to its partially filmed nature, along with Adams' low opinion of the story, since the writer refused many offers to adapt it. However, a reconstruction using the and existing footage was released on VHS in 1992, followed by a big finish adaption in 2003 as a webcast production, featuring Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor alongside Lala Ward's Romana 2. The story was also novelised in 2012, before being finally completed through animation in 2017, with the original cast returning, at last closing a 37-year-old chapter of Doctor Who's history. Around September 1979, Into the Comet was pitched to script editor Douglas Adams by novelist James Follett. Despite being denied, Follett resubmitted it around May 1980, now that Adams had been replaced by Christopher H. Bidmead, so he hoped it may be accepted this time. The storyline would see monsters attacking a race of beings who live inside Halley's Comet, unaware that there was anything to the universe beyond. However, much like his predecessor, Bidmead also rejected the story idea and nothing would come of it. Another storyline with a similar history was The Psychonauts by David Fisher. No, not that Psychonauts. Which would have the Doctor face off against the Nephilim, creatures who travel through time in sleeping units disguised as sarcophagi. The name Nephilim had been drawn from the Old Testament and various Jewish writings, referring to a kind of demon. However, much like Into the Comet, the outline was rejected by Adams in late 1979 and not taken forward by his successors. Fisher also submitted The Castle of Doom to new producer John Nathan Turner, although nothing remains of this storyline and it was also rejected. However, Nathan Turner would instead commission Fisher to write The Leisure Hive to open season 18, beckoning in his new era of the show, but this would end up being Fisher's final contribution to Doctor Who on television. Since this was a new era, the production team wanted fresh new ideas and to move away from the comical and goofy tone of the show under Williams and Adams. An attempt to pivot this tone came as Bin Mead publicly appealed to serious science fiction authors to submit their own ideas for Doctor Who. Australian writer John Brosnan, who at the time was writing for sci-fi magazine, magazine Starburst, contacted Binmead with a rather unusual suggestion for a serial. The untitled outline would see the fourth Doctor land at the BBC Television Centre, where he encounters Tom Baker himself, the two working together to combat a threat. Unsurprisingly, this idea was not pursued, since it was most likely too meta for Bidme's vision of the show. However, the idea would later resurface two more times, both in comic form. Firstly, Alan Barnes would write a Doctor Who magazine comic in 1999, where the Eighth Doctor finds himself in the real world, where his adventures are a TV show played out by Tom Baker. The concept would again be revisited in Paul Cornell's 2013 story, The Girl Who Loved Doctor Who, which saw the 11th Doctor crossing into our universe and meeting Matt Smith at a Doctor Who convention. So clearly, it has always been a popular idea to have the Doctor appear in our own world. During October of 1978, novelist Christopher Priest had been working with then script editor Douglas Adams on a Doctor Who story idea, but little progress had been made. However, after Adams' departure, Christopher H. Bidmead approached Priest to revive the story. As he was a personal fan of Priest's novels, the writer was very much in line with Bidmead's idea of how the show should be. The four-parter Sealed Orders was therefore commissioned on February 27th, 1980, intended as the fifth story of season 18. This would be a political thriller set on Gallifrey, where the Doctor is seemingly ordered by the Time Lords to kill his companion Romana. The plot would involve hopping back and forth in time, ultimately causing multiple versions of the TARDIS and a second version of the Doctor, who ends up being killed. Aside from TARDISes existing inside one another, it's not clear how extreme these time paradoxes would be, although the story was intended to write Romana and K-9 out of the show. By the time full scripts were requested on March 24th, Sealed Orders was expected to conclude a trilogy of stories set in the pocket universe of eSpace. However, like many authors approached for Doctor Who at the time, Christopher Priest was not used to writing for television and it soon became clear that his scripts were not suitable for production. In an attempt to improve the story, Bidmead provided the author with heavily edited samples as guidance for what he wanted, but Priest was understandably offended and their relationship deteriorated as a result. Priest stopped working on sealed orders in April, and Stephen Gallagher would write Warrior's Gate in its place to conclude the eSpace trilogy and bid farewell to Romana and K9. 
Sealed Orders was formally abandoned in June of 1980, although Bid Mead and producer John Nathan Turner still hoped that it could be revisited in the future, which possibly explains the plot point of a TARDIS inside of a TARDIS during the season 18 finale, Logopolis. However, Priest never forgot the way he was treated by the production team. Richard Bignall, who has spent many years archiving pieces of Doctor Who media including the majority of surviving lost stories, has gone on record with the following statement regarding Sealed Orders and Season 19's Enemy Within. I certainly don't expect to ever see either of Christopher's scripts out in the open all the time he's still alive. Nearly 40 years on, he's still appalled by the way he was treated, and having spoken to him several times, he has no intention of them ever seeing the light of day. On March 14th, 1980, Mark of Lumos, a story written by Keith Miles, was commissioned. Just four days later, Pharaoh No Hand by Andrew Stevenson and Mouth of Grath by Malcolm Edwards and Leroy Kettle were also commissioned but no further details of any of these stories remain, as they never proceeded past the basic storyline stages, and these outlines have never resurfaced. Similarly, on March 29th, 1980, Christopher H. Bidmead commissioned The Dogs of Darkness by Jack Gardner, but the plot of this story has also been lost to time. Gardner was eventually asked to expand the Dogs of Darkness into full scripts as a possible adventure for Season 19, but to replace the Fourth Doctor with the Fifth Doctor. The story was apparently still under consideration by the end of April 1981, but was then abandoned and these further revisions are also lost. Due to both Doctor Who's huge popularity and the ability to send scripts to the production office, many fans of the show decided to try their hand at submitting their own stories for consideration. One such fan was Nabil Shaban, who had previously offered to replace the late Roger Delgado as the Doctor's Time Lord rival, the Master. After nothing came of this, he submitted Invasion of the Veridans in 1980. Rather interestingly, Shaban went a step further, and actually put himself forward for consideration as the Fifth Doctor. The story had been written in the early 1970s, and was apparently heavily influenced by the Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee eras of the show, but Shaban believes the only copy of his story is lost as he no longer has the script of the sole episode he wrote of the serial. However, Shaban would still achieve his dream of appearing in Doctor Who, since he would go on to play the villainous Sill in 1985's Vengeance on Varus and in the Trial of a Time Lord serial commonly referred to as Mind Warp. Season 19 is known for introducing Peter Davison's Fifth Doctor, but before Tom Baker had decided to depart the show at the conclusion of Season 18, the production team had already begun to tentatively plan Season 19 with the expectation Baker would continue portraying the Doctor. One of the stories planned for this original Season 19 was Soldar and the Plastoids by John Bennett, which was commissioned on April 10th, 1980, although sadly nothing remains of this storyline idea. Similarly, on June 13th that same year, Psychrons was commissioned for Terence Greer to write. The outline was rejected though in 1981, but this does indicate that it was altered for the Fifth Doctor, but no details remain to confirm or deny this development. The last of these rough outlines for a Baker-led Season 19 was Romanoids by Jeff Lowe, submitted in the summer of 1980. Bidmead seemed to have been at least interested in this proposal, since he passed it on to producer John Nathan Turner in December that same year, although it was not developed any further. There was another story titled Spacewell considered for Season 19 before Baker announced his departure, but I'll be covering that next time since it's mainly associated with the Fifth Doctor era. Season 18 had seen the Doctor travelling through eSpace fighting vampires and cacti before once again facing his old enemy the Master. However, the sci-fi series had become a ship of Theseus of sorts, with a constantly revolving door of cast and crew retaining almost nothing since Season 1. This meant that by 1981, it had heavily departed from how it was when Tom Baker first joined. He was surrounded by strangers, a producer he hated, and a co-star wife he constantly fought with. He wasn't happy, and working on Doctor Who had become a mentally taxing piece of his life. So, after appearing as a Doctor for an unprecedented seven years, Tom Baker came to the conclusion that it was time to move on. At the same time, script editor Christopher H. Bidmead and executive producer Barry Letts also chose to walk away from the show in search of new challenges, essentially leaving John Nathan Turner with a clean slate for his new, controversial vision. With the departure of the immensely popular Fourth Doctor, the original run of Doctor Who was unknowingly taking the first steps towards its infamous conclusion eight years later. However, as Fifth Doctor Peter Davison and producer John Nathan Turner became the new faces of Doctor Who, one thing remained unchanged. There was 
are still many untold stories on the horizon. Thanks for watching. And I'd like to give an extra special thank you to all my gold level patrons Alex Marston, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Fowlan Cortez, Franz Horn aka Line Vortex, George, John, Stephen Evan Miller, and William Jewell. Thank you so much for your support.